You know, your gastrointestinal system is amazing. Just think about it. You ingest food and fluid and chemicals and medications. And then somehow along this eight meter tube, with the help of some acid and some enzymes and about a trillion bacteria that we call your microbiome, your gastrointestinal system somehow breaks all of those things down into its component parts and then very efficiently absorbs just what you need in order to live. Now that is amazing. But thank goodness we don't need to know all of the intricate details of that system in order to understand constipation and diarrhea. The way I see it, there's two things you need to know if you want to understand constipation and diarrhea. One of them is the concept of how water moves in and out of your intestines by osmosis. That's important. And the second concept is how food and waste matter move along your intestines by a process called peristalsis. So we got osmosis and we got peristalsis. And understanding how those two things work will go a long way towards having you understand what's behind constipation and diarrhea. All right, let's start with water. I bet you'd be surprised to find out how much water goes through the average adult intestine in one day. Nine liters. Yeah, nine liters. That's an awful lot of water. How do we get nine liters? We don't drink all that. No, in fact, what we eat and what we drink accounts for only about two liters of that. Our saliva, incredibly, is another liter and a half. Gastric juices, another two and a half liters from there. Pancreatic juices, bile juice, that's another liter and a half or so. And then we have a liter from the intestines themselves. All that adds up to about nine liters. Nine, wait a second, nine liters doesn't go all the way through. So where does it go? Well, incredibly, your small intestine reabsorbs seven of those liters. Yeah, seven liters comes from your small intestine back into your system, specifically back into your bloodstream. And the large intestine reabsorbs about the other two liters. So that all you have left are maybe 100, 200 mils that come out with your feces. So 99% of the water that goes through your intestinal tract gets reabsorbed into your bloodstream. That's what I call efficiency. All this water going from your intestine into your bloodstream, how does that happen? By osmosis. You remember osmosis from high school chemistry? Osmosis is where water will flow from an area of low concentration of solute to an area of high concentration of solute across a semi-permeable membrane. In other words, your body has ways to ensure that the concentration of things like sodium and glucose are higher in your bloodstream than they are in the lumen of your intestine which creates a concentration gradient, which forces water to flow from the lumen of the intestine through the cells that line the intestine into your bloodstream. And that's how reabsorption happens. All along that intestine that goes on for about eight meters. Seven liters worth in the small intestine and another two liters worth in the large intestine. Osmosis, amazing. So when you think about peristalsis, you want to think about two things. One is your enteric nervous system, and the other is soft bulk. Let's start with the enteric nervous system. Did you know that your gut had a brain? That's what some people call the enteric nervous system, probably because it has more nerve cells than your spinal cord. And in fact, it works with 30 neurotransmitters. Did you know that 95% of the serotonin in your body is in your enteric nervous system? Now, one of the ways that your enteric nervous system affects peristalsis is through its communication with your brain. Now, anybody who's had a difficult exam or a talk to give and had to run to the bathroom before knows about this communication between your brain and your enteric nervous system. When you get stressed, your enteric nervous system causes more peristalsis. And the same is true with people with irritable bowel syndrome. When their stress level increases, so do their symptoms, including their symptoms of peristalsis. The other thing that can affect your enteric nervous system are drugs. Now, you're probably already familiar with one of those drugs, and that is caffeine. When you take caffeine, it will increase the peristalsis through its effect on your enteric nervous system. The other class of drugs you may be familiar with are opiates. 
you know that there are opiate receptors in your enteric nervous system. So if you ever have codeine or morphine, that will slow down your peristalsis. We take advantage of this effect with a medication called loperamide that we use to treat diarrhea. Loperamide attaches to the same receptors that the opiates do and slows down peristalsis. So let's talk about soft bulk. It turns out that peristalsis, that coordinated muscular contraction that propels things along your intestine, works better when it's working with soft, large bulk. So how do you get soft, large bulk to stay in your intestine? Well, if it's staying in your intestine, then it has to be indigestible. And if it's indigestible, we're talking about fiber. All right, so fiber is indigestible food matter. But did you know that there are two types of fiber? There is soluble fiber and insoluble fiber. Let's start with soluble fiber. It can be found in things like beans and legumes and in psyllium husk, otherwise known in the brand name Metamucil. Soluble fiber has health benefits of its own, including slowing down the emptying of your stomach to make you feel more full. And that jelly-like substance ferments in the large intestine and helps the absorption of certain nutrients. And as it goes through the intestine, that jelly-like substance can slow down the absorption of other nutrients like cholesterol and glucose. Now, indigestible fiber can be found in things like bran and whole grains and the peels of fruits and vegetables. Now, the big benefit of insoluble fiber is its ability to hold on to water. It sucks up water through the small intestine and holds on to that water even as it gets into the large intestine, creating soft bulk. 